Dr. Joe Bessler teaches theology here at Phillips. And Joe, as you begin, uh, I would like to invite you to introduce yourself. And then we'll talk a little bit more about uh, how to do um, theological reflection and um, what your sense of vocation is. Sure. Is it helpful for me to look right at the camera? Is that, is that best? Okay, good. Well, I'm Joe Bessler, and I am. I have a, a chaired position. It's the Robert Travis Peak uh, Chair. I'm Associate Professor of Theology. Uh, I teach courses in kind of the Introduction to Theology course. First time I'm doing that in a number of years, uh, and it's very fun. And uh, course in Constructive Theology, which is the last required course that students take. I also uh, will teach some mid-range courses as well as say in Christology or Doctrine of God or Anthropology, all those wonderful words that you know you'll, you'll, you'll pick up. Um, I also enjoy teaching courses uh, in more religion and literature, so theological themes in the contemporary novel is a course I really enjoy as well as a course in, in theological autobiography. Uh, that's a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of fun. And, uh, and then more recently I've taught uh, a course in religion and politics that's been uh, uh, quite, quite fun. And, and actually that, that work has animated some professional writing I'm, I'm doing as well. What my professional colleagues think of it, we'll, we'll have to see. But um, at any rate, that's been uh, a lot of fun. I, I'm also uh, an associate dean for assessment of, uh, so what's this called, assessment and, and faculty development. The assessment part has to do with uh, uh, assessing student learning, which is a new challenge that's facing um, all schools, really, across the theological spectrum. And, uh, and uh, so we're kind of taking that on uh, behalf of the seminary. So um, very active, very busy. Good. And I know that you have shared uh, some poems with us already, yes. with some pictures from your trip to Ireland. Oh, right. And I wonder if you would like to draw on those poems to talk a little bit about your sense of, of what vocation is about. Yeah. Um, sure. I think, primarily, I think vocation, uh, in a common sense for, for all of us, uh, who are Christians um, has to do with first of all a sense of love of God and and then also with a sense of the love of God's world I mean you can probably hear me playing off the great commandment of love of God and love of neighbor and kind of expanding that playfully a little bit to to say um, to mention the love of God's world which certainly includes the neighbor uh, and I think that common sense of vocation of what we are about as people of, of faith. Um, and I'm bracketing for a moment the theological question about the reality of God, right? I mean, that's an important theological kind of quest in philosophical theology. What do we mean by God and, and uh, how do we in some sense defend the reality of God in a world where not everyone believes in God? That's important, but I'm bracketing that. So I'm assuming the reality of God for our conversation here. And, um, and it seems to me that that broad sense of vocation is important so that we realize that we are about a common task and that none of us think, as it were, a good scriptural verse here, more highly of ourselves than we, than we ought, um, that there are, are multiple gifts in the community of faith and that the pursuit of learning um, is a particular gift, but it is by no means uh, the only one. And the pursuit of learning itself has many voices and many paths. And so first of all, that, that sense of common vocation uh, that links what I do to the life of the church, that links what I do to the life of those who are seekers, um, who are wondering about faith, as well as to those who are seeking really a professional life to uh, in, in the life of the clergy or uh, a more involved life in their congregation or uh, pursuing the life of scholarship. Um, 
it's important that we build these bridges um, and uh, with one another and that we not think of ourselves as too isolated or one more important than the other. To me, the poem Digging gets at that, uh, insofar as, as I mentioned in the reflection itself on the poem, that what Heaney is trying to do is to connect his own emerging voice as a poet with his love for his father and his grandfather. It's very easy. The, the temptation, of course, would be to see himself as a poet doing this oh, this very literate, noble thing uh, in a very kind of elite kind of discourse. And he rejects that view of himself uh, or the task of the poet. And he sees himself and his writing, and it comes through in his writing, as a bit more earthy, more grounded, that what he's doing with that pen is digging by God. He is exploring the textures of life and seeking wisdom. And, um, and I think that that is an important um, part of his poem, or important aspect of his poem, that he seeks and understands himself within the web of the interconnections of his parents and grandparents, and uh, a broader tradition, and not simply an aesthetic tradition. And then I think that the other poem, the postscript, uh, is important because I believe that um, the experience of wonder is central to our religious lives, that we need to nurture in an ongoing way uh, an openness to being caught off guard. <laughs> I mean, it's, um, it's a little bit of a uh, conundrum, I think. Uh, to say, you know, be ready for surprises, because by very nature, surprises are what we're not ready for. Uh, and, and yet, how, how is it that we do nurture a kind of, of openness to life where we don't know it all already, where we don't have it mastered all already, where we have a kind of vulnerability uh, and we hold loosely to what we know, to what we believe. We hold loosely, not because we're not committed to it, but because we are ready in some ways to learn something new, to be uh, surprised by life uh, in, in multiple ways. And so, um, for me, that's quite important. Um, I'm the youngest. The other piece I connect with Heaney is that I am also come from a large family, a Catholic family. I'm the youngest of seven. And I think that all of us come to a sense of our own individual vocation within that broader one of loving God and of loving God's world. We come to it largely by a whole host of things from our genetic package to um, our inclinations to the things we're drawn to, the skills that we have, and all of those over time contribute to our own sense of how we are going to live out this common vocation that we hold in our own particular way. Um, and for me, I, I brought along the, this uh, scrapbook. About nine minutes. Okay. And um, so I think I'll maybe share a little bit of this scrapbook in, in the next segment uh, with you. Um, because it talks about some, some images from my early life that uh, when I look backward, I. Uh, I can see what I've become in them. Thank you.